Chronic refractory tendinopathy is a very common problem. Today, the definitive treatment for the refractory case is a surgical procedure. It is characterized by cutting through and removing the diseased tissue. An innovative technology that has been introduced by 10X Health somewhat simulates surgery in that it also cuts through and removes diseased tissue. But it does so with local anesthesia and a percutaneous insertion of the ultrasonic energy. The safety and efficacy is not influenced by the setting in which this is performed. Today, we will be demonstrating the procedures in an ambulatory surgical center. However, they can equally and effectively be done in a procedural room or even in a clinical setting. This 46-year-old school teacher enjoys playing tennis and enjoys walking. She has a six-month history of intermittent heel pain. It does interfere with her daily activity and also notes difficulty going up and down stairs. She's had one PRP injection and says this may have helped some, but not very much. She's tried multiple shoe changes, also with little or no benefit. I understand that you've had pain in your heel area now for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Tell me, in the last uh, two or three months, do you think you know, overall your symptoms are getting better, worse, or staying the same? I think, if anything, they've gotten worse. And uh, are there any particular activities that make them worse, or is it just everything that you do? Um, some days I just can't even walk. I see. And uh, if nothing were done, if we told you that this usually goes away on its own and nothing needs to be done, is that the kind of thing it seems like this could go away on its own as far as you're concerned? Um, I don't see how it could go away on its own, no. Would you mind uh, slipping your sandal off and show me where does this uh, hurt the most? Can you point it with one finger where you have most of your pain? Just right around in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to reproduce your pain. Uh, tell me, does it hurt here? Yes. And now I'm going to... Kind of poke around on the middle of the tendon. Does that hurt as well? Yes, it does. And what about on this side of the tendon? Yes. So sometimes a person only hurts in one part, but you, you hurt in your entire tendon where it attaches to the bone. Is yes. that right? Yes. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, we can certainly treat this, and I think it is reasonable to use the technique that we've described. Uh, do you have any uh, questions or uh, concerns? No, not right now. Okay, then I think we'll just go ahead. Okay. Good. The patient is positioned to allow the procedure to be comfortably performed and be comfortable for the patient as well. Okay, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I want to confirm where you're having most of your pain. So I want to be poking along around this again. Does this bother here? That's one of the areas. And what about here? Yeah. Okay. And finally over on the other side? Yeah. So all across the bottom here, right where the tendon hooks onto the bone? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to examine this under the ultrasound. So you'll feel some gel on your skin. This won't be a painful examination, but this will be helpful for us to know exactly where the problem is so that we can be sure to address it as effectively as we can. Okay, so we do see exactly where you're hurting the kind of problem that should respond to this kind of treatment. It's called a tendinopathy. It means the tendon is pulled away from the bone to some extent and is not healthy. That's what's causing your pain. And as you pointed out, it's, it's pretty extensive. It goes all the way across the attachment of the tendon. I can see the bone, and I can see where the tendon attaches to the bone. So I think um, uh, it's reasonable to go ahead with the procedures we discussed. So the first thing we're going to do, I'll tell you everything we're doing. The first thing is that we're going to Clean the area and prepare it with something called chloroprep. This will keep the skin clean to help avoid an infection. This will be a little wet, won't be painful. All 
Okay, now you'll feel some towels. And this, again, is just to keep the area clean for the procedure. A thin layer of non-sterile gel is used to cover the face of the ultrasound transducer and it is placed in a sterile sleeve. So we've identified the area of maximum tenderness in the middle and she's hurting on both sides as well. But um, <clears throat> we, on ultrasound earlier, demonstrated she, her calcification is in the middle. So that being the case, we're going to head and um, anesthetize um, off to the side of the tendon and introduce the uh, microtip through an oblique angle to the uh, site that we have marked, which is the site of the calcification. So we feel ourselves down onto the calcaneus and we'll anesthetize the track and anesthetize the skin wheel. Then we'll follow this track. You may feel a little pressure. Let us know if you've got any pain. We'll introduce the microtip through this puncture site, and it's important to be sure that we can advance this to the attachment. That'll make it easier for the microtip to enter that area. Now, the microtip consists of the ultrasonic energy delivery system. It's hollow, so it aspirates. And at the same time, uh, it um, also is uh, irrigated, so it cools and prevents uh, thermal injury. This is a sterile gel, so the penetration of the gel under the skin will not cause any problems or any comp complications, such as an uh, inclusion cyst. Now we're going to introduce this through a somewhat oblique uh, orientation and right uh, past the crest of the uh, Achilles, the calcification in the hypoechoic area can be seen. And we'll advance the microtip, which will be, since it's on a slight oblique angle, the visualization of the uh, microtip is not quite as obvious as when it's straight in plane. Here we can see the microtip just reaching that little calcific body and we'll start the treatment there. And we're right at the apex of the calcaneus, right at the insertion site, the mid portion of the Achilles tendon. Now we're right over the top, right at the area of concern, just a little bit short of the calcific area. Now we're right in that area, right precisely the area of maximum tenderness, you can see the tip, you can see the more hypoechoic or blackened area. We're coming in slightly oblique, so we don't see the full length of the microtip, only the tip. And now we withdraw the tip slightly, 
and treat the more uh, the deeper portion of the attachment. Now, we're going to sweep a little bit um, medially since the patient was having symptoms medially. Okay. Now, her lesion, although she hurt on both sides of the tendon, is pretty central. And uh, it looks like we've really... Uh, treated most of that central portion. The uh, time of the energy is about 40 seconds. Usually the time for these uh, Achilles tendon can be anywhere from 45 to maybe a, even a couple of minutes, but this one really won't require that duration of treatment. A little bit of calcification right at this attachment side. And the rest of that actually looks pretty good. I'm sweeping now more laterally. And I think that really probably is, really covers the pathology that we can identify. So with that, we'll withdraw the microtib. And so at this point, we'll post the puncture site with a simple Steri strip. And then we'll put a tegaderm or a similar type of dressing over that. And this will stay on three to five days or until it either seems like it's healed or it comes off on its own. And then we'll further wrap this with an ice bandage and give it a little compression and see her back in the clinic in a few days. On the clinical examination, it is important to have the patient identify the point of maximum tenderness, and this should be confirmed at the time of the examination. In addition, the area is again confirmed with an ultrasound examination immediately before the procedure. The area of involvement is prepped and draped as if a steroid injection were to be done. When introducing the local anesthetic, it is helpful to go to the bone and to anesthetize the attachment of the tendon to the bone. It is also important not to begin the insertion of the microtip too distal to the pathology. The puncture site should not only go through the skin, but also through the fascia to facilitate the entry of the microtip to the pathology. The microtip is moved back and forth. Avoid moving the tip to and fro or out of plane, as this is not an effective means of introducing the ultrasonic energy. There are visual clues to completeness. If there is a hypoechoic area, this typically will undergo a change that is observed on the ultrasound diagnostic portion that demonstrates completeness of the procedure. So, did you have very much uh, discomfort with that procedure? No, not after. Good. Um, are you having any pain now? No. Well, tonight you may, and so what we'd like for you to do is put some ice on it for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then it would be wise to take a couple of Tylenol. And then tomorrow, depending upon how much discomfort you have, you can also continue that Tylenol and ice for the next day or so. Okay. So what we want you to do is for the next two or three days, we don't want you to do very much. Take it really easy. If it's feeling pretty good after a couple of days, for the next couple of weeks, two to three weeks, just routine daily activities. But don't really tromp on it very much. You shouldn't be very active. Okay. We want to see you between two and three weeks. You can make an appointment with the secretary. Okay. After that visit, typically we will allow you to increase your activity. So by six weeks, six weeks from now, hopefully the symptoms will be pretty well gone. 
and you can resume normal activities. But we'll let you know at that two to three week visit. So here's a card that has those instructions, just reinforces what I've been telling you. And it's also got my contact number. Okay. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay? okay? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome.